Okay, so hi again, it's Michelle from My Fashion Tutor. Um, just really looking on the uh, YouTube to find out if there was many um, illustrator um, tutorials on knitwear. There are a few. Uh, but I didn't seem to find any that spoke about fashioning. So for those of you who don't know what fashioning is, I have put a um, image of um, or example of what fashioning actually looks like. But fashioning is also the proper term for it is called fully fashioned. Um, and basically what it does is the it's a flat knitted machine um, and it adds shaping into a garment. So for instance, you tend to find it around the armholes. Um, in particular because if we think about knit knitwear and the way it's been made it's not a um, panel of fabric where you can add sh cut you can cut the shaping in so for instance with your armhole you will cut in the curve in order, order to get the shaping around the armhole knitwear is obviously very different um, most of the time it is done with a um, single yarn obviously going um, across um, the um, the the weft um, of the the panel and so you can imagine if you try to then cut into that knitted panel it wouldn't be as um, easy to do um, it would be quite messy obviously you have to think about it fraying or completely unraveling um, and that being said fully fashioning sometimes is more expensive um, to do than cut and sew which is where you would just cut out panels out of a knitted um, uh, panel of fabric, um, sheets of, you know, a length of fabric or a length of knitted fabric. So um, what they tend to do is, um, and how it kind of works, is they would increase and decrease the number of stitchings in the row in order to get that shaping. But what ha actually happens when you do this um, is that you get a sort of, um, this sort of texture that goes around the ex the section which has been fully fashioned um, and that is obviously because I said some of the stitches have been dropped so you tend to get a different pattern that goes along that part of the knitted panel. Um, again this is another example of it, it's, there's a, a really um, unique or um, a different type of uh, change to the knit when it is fully fashioned it's quite apparent that it has been fully fashioned in that area. So what I'm going to do today is just really give you um, some idea of actually how we can create that tex texture around the armhole by creating a brush. So first and foremost uh, we're going to make sure that we have a new layer. I'm going to give myself a new layer um, and I'm going to use this, this is just an example of how I envision, so basically I looked at the fashioning and it does do that sort of curved effect there, so that's why you've got, I've got this sort of curved um, effect going down the um, uh, above this shape here and also this line, when we finish you'll see exactly what that is, but that is to um, uh, indicate where the um, uh, knit changes direction around the armhole as a continuous line. So you could create this yourself, you can just look at um, some knitwear or look at some fashioning and literally just use your pen tool to create a shape um, that you can use that can be turned into a brush. So I'm just going to use this as a template just to show you, I'm going to give myself a different colour. I'm going to take you through the stages of actually creating this from scratch. So I'm going to get my pen tool, I'm going to increase the weight of this a little bit uh, and I'm literally going to start drawing my over my template that I've used here and get to this point here as well and I'm going to get to the end point here and then I'm going to go back on myself to complete that line. Now I think my stroke's a little bit thick so I'm going to go back and actually change my stroke weight so by doing that I'm just going to go to the strokes, so I'm going to pull this up here I'm going to decrease that by to about three. Okay, I'm still not happy with some of the shaping here so I can use my anchor arms to kind of correct that a little bit and I'm going to do the same here Okay, so let's just do this bit. Let's get a bit more shaping in here. I 
let's get our white arrow tool and move our anchor arm so it's a bit more of a better curve there. Great, okay, so now I've done that, I can get back out of isolation mode. I'm gonna click on this shape. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to decrease this. I'm gonna make it smaller. Um, the reason being is when we create a brush, we are in fact creating, we're applying an effect to a normal stroke line or a normal um, uh, uh, pen line. And we would, treat it in the same way so we would be able to decrease the stroke weight etc etc so we need to make sure that we start off relatively small if we start off quite big we won't have much to play with when we start messing or uh, editing the stroke weight for various effects so I'm going to first of all make sure that before I scale this down that my scale tool is set up correctly. Sometimes what happens when you don't have the scale tool uh, set up correctly and you go to scale things down, sometimes what happens is it can stay um, very thick. So um, what I mean by that is it will it will scale down the shape proportionately but it won't scale the stroke at the same rate. So it's important that we check first that when we click on the, let me do that again so you see, double click on the scale tool which is S that we make sure that this setting is correct. So we need to make sure that we're scaling strokes and effect at the same time. Let me just dis de deselect that so you can see what happens when you don't have that. So what I meant is if I select this now and I start to scale this down without even checking the settings, can you see how it stayed really thick but the actual shape itself has got small so it hasn't scaled the stroke. So as I said, if we go back now to scale stroke and effects and make sure that this is selected scale strokes and effects, Okay, now when we select this shape to scale it down, we can see that it has scaled down the stroke width as well. Now, I've scaled this down quite small um, because I want to have as much flexibility when I'm um, editing it for various reasons. So I'm going to scale it down and I've left the main one on the screen so you can see exactly how small I've actually done that. Now, before you make it into a brush, you are going to need to make sure that there is no fill colour on it at all. Okay, and I'm going to just change this colour now from red back to black because normally when you work with technical drawings it is in black and white so I need to make sure this this brush is going to be in black so that I can use it without any issues. So I'm going to get my brushes. If your brushes aren't there you just go to windows and select brushes. If there's a tick by it, it already means that it's the dialog box is open. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, I'm going to show you an example of what the brushes actually do just quickly now actually. If I just draw a straight line and I click on any of these in the brushes box, you'll see that it applies that effect to the line. Okay, so as I said, if I increase the stroke weight, you'll see that the pattern gets, um, the brush gets bigger. Um, and so that's what I meant by making it small to begin with so that you can make it as small as possible without having any issues. Let me just delete that to show you. So how do we get this into the brushes? What we need to do is we will get our shape with the black arrow tool and we will drag it into the brushes. We're gonna select at this point, new pattern brush, and then we're gonna go, okay, we're going to get another option box that comes up which gives us a bit more flexibility or a bit more um, control over how we want our brush to finally look. So I'm going to keep this as, I'm going to call this fashioning brush one. I'm going to keep the scale at 100. I'm going to leave everything else as it is. I'm going to keep it as original. I'm going to do fit to approximate path, not fit to stretch. And then I'm going to do colorization method, which is going to be tints and shades. Now, what that is, is basically it allows me to change the color of my brush, regardless of what color I made it in its original state. So as I said, I made it in black to begin with. But if I wanted to change it at a later date to red, by selecting method tints and shade, it gives me that flexibility. So I'm just going to go OK. And as soon as I do that, you're going to see that that brush has been made and it's already in the dialog box. Okay, 
Now, the, the direction you drag it in will determine the direction of the brush when you go to apply it. So let's go to um, use an example. I'm going to do the same for this other one, another technique, and then I'm going to show you how we would apply it to a um, armhole, for instance. So let me just go over here, and we're going to create the same thing here. Okay, so I'm going to get my pen tool, I'm going to change the stroke color. Remember that, as I said, there's no fill required. I'm just going to get my pen and I'm going to literally start drawing that shape. It's very thin at the moment, so I can go to my strokes and increase that width. I just want to make sure that it is the right uh, thickness. Um, it's also important to make sure that you, where's my layers? Let's go to my layers that I'm working on the right layer. So I'm just gonna move this layer up because it's slightly behind the shape. So if I unlock this and move this up, so you can see it's now in the right order. Okay, I'm gonna continue drawing uh, the other line at the bottom. And so I've got that. Now what I'm gonna do is grab them both. I'm gonna scale it down like I did in the first instance. instance. And I'm going to, oh, let's make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to put it here so you can see just how small I've made it. So I've made it quite small. And now I'm going to grab everything. I'm going to change this to have a black stroke. Um, okay. And then I'm going to drag it into the brushes. And I'm going to do pattern brush. And then I'm going to select OK. I'm going to do fashioning brush two. Again, fit to approximate path, keep everything else the same, and then select tints and shades. And then I'm going to go OK. Now that I've done that, I'm going to show you how basically what that looks like when we have finished it. So I'm going to say, for instance, this is my armhole. So I'm going to draw a curve to show that is my armhole. I'm going to just make this a little bit um, thicker so you can see. That is my armhole shape. Let's just make it a little bit more like the photograph. Okay. And so as you can see here, the fashioning doesn't go all the way up the top to the armhole. On this one, this is a normal uh, um, sleeve, um, a normal armhole, whereas the other one is a raglan. So on a normal armhole, you tend to get the fashioning higher on one instance and lower on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my fashioning so that it looks like what we have on the left-hand side. So I'm going to draw another line, which is going to be the stroke or the line that I'm going to apply that brush to. Okay. And try to make sure that it's a similar curve. Fashioning shouldn't be the same stroke weight as um, your outline or your style line of your armhole. It should always be more discreet. So I'm going to change it to 0 0.5. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this brush because that's the one we created. And you'll be able to see how it's now created a sort of fashioning effect on that part of the armhole. Let's make that a bit thicker so you can see. Obviously when you're doing it on your garment you need to keep it quite um, discreet. So that's one part of it, okay? Now we need to put fashioning on the other side. So I'm going to um, copy this over. So I'm gonna get my black arrow key, use the Alt key and drag over to the other side. And I'm gonna just play around with it a little bit. I'm not quite happy with the curve matching as much, so I'm gonna um, use my white arrow tool to change the curve a bit more so that it looks a bit more like it's parallel. But as I said to you, let's change it on this one as well. As I said to you before, actually what happens with the fashioning on the other side is that this, this curve goes in the other direction, okay? But, our brush that we've created is going in this direction. And 
really we can't even if we was to reflect it we'll reflect the whole thing we wouldn't reflect what the actual brush is doing so in order to get it to go into the right direction what you'd need to do is get your original um uh object um shape that you drew and we're going to rotate it round so it's going the other direction and then since we've rotated it going into the other direction you can see it's going around the other direction so you can either do that by hovering over and then using your um, uh, mouse to rotate it or you can literally just go right click um, transform reflect and reflect it um, horizontally Okay, so now I'm going to drag this into the brushes again. I'm going to create a new pattern brush and I'm going to call this Fashioning Brush Brush 1B. And then I'm going to click everything the same again, approximate path, tints and shades, and select OK. Now I'm going to try and apply the brush to the other side so that it's going the right direction. So I'm going to click on it and now it goes on the other direction. Okay, and you can play around with this even more. I mean, you can move this to a bit more so it's outside the shape. You can also copy and paste this um, curve and start to make it look a bit more realistic by changing the stroke width as well. And it can look quite effective when you've actually got it on a um, actual technical drawing. So again, I'm just gonna copy and paste that again. I'm gonna apply the stroke width to uh, the same as the other one. So let me just get my petal or my eyedropper and click on, click on that to get the same stroke. And then I'm gonna put it on the other side of the armhole. So you can see it's kind of giving the same effect that you have going on here. And so I'm going to do that again on this side, but obviously this is a raglan. So I'm going to actually just do a diagonal stroke to actually let me just do this more of a saddle armhole. So I'm just going to draw in the armhole that represents that shape. Let me just increase that weight to two. And I'm just going to go in a bit closer. Let's just make this a bit nicer here. Just leave that out. And then I'm going to click on here. I'm going to copy that, Command-C, Command-V. And then I'm going to put that closer to the original armhole line now. And I'm going to take this down again to 0 0.5. Normally you'd hope, but obviously for you guys to see I've done it um, I'm going to do it a little bit heavier, but normally it would be 0.5 or 0.75. Let me leave it at that actually and see. I'm going to click on here and I can see that this has applied it. Can you see how faint that is? It almost needs to be um, slightly bigger. So all I need to do is I need to change the scale of it until I'm happy with the ratio of the fashioning to the armhole shape. Again, so we're going to have the same issue that we had. Let me take that down to one so you can see it a bit better. We're going to have the same issue that we had with the other brush when we put this on the other direction. So I'm going to go back to my original, my original uh, shape that I drew. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to right click, transform, reflect horizontally. And go OK, and then I'm going to drag that into the brushes again. New pattern brush, OK. Fashioning brush to B. Fit to approximate path. Tints and shades at the colorization, and select OK. Now I'm going to apply it to this line because, as I said, it goes in a different direction. So it's going on this direction, going downwards and it's going that direction going downwards. So now I need to apply it here. So I'm gonna click on it, click on the one that I've created so that it's going in the other direction. Now, when we did this, there was another line that we drew and you can see it's kind of given that sort of rib effect 
that you sometimes get at fashioning. So let me just move this apart. I'm gonna select this line. I'm gonna add some more dimension to this fashioning. Um, so you can see what that would look like as well. Let's can copy that as well over here. And I think it's quite a good representation of what we have going on this side. So that's it. So I would really um, advise you to go away, look at some fashioning on some knitwear and get the idea of what it looks like and what the different um, techniques that people are using. And then really just create your own sort of idea or shape of what that fashioning looks like as a single repeat and then create it as a brush. Once you've done that, you just need to save this as a brush so you can use it for later use. If you go to the drop down, see where the brushes are, you go to the drop down arrow in the right hand corner, save as a brush library, you're gonna give it a new name. So I'm gonna say fashioning brushes. And I'm going to save it again somewhere where I would find it easy to, um, to um, locate. Um, often people save the brushes and have no idea where they've saved it so I always try to save it somewhere where I know I'm going to be able to find it it's often the desktop and save it later then I'm going to do save and then if I was to close this down for instance and I want to open it again I would go to brushes um, actually if I want to open it up in another document so if I go to file new it's going to open a random document I can see that the brushes that I created earlier are not here. So again, to open it, I will go to the brushes again, go to the drop down arrow in the right hand corner, select open brush library, go to other, and go exactly to where I, I saved it before, which is actually on the desktop, fashioning brushes, and go OK. Don't drag it into Illustrator, because you'll find that it does not work um, as well, it won't translate over. So you can see the brushes that I've created there. And that's it, leave your comments in the box, let me have some feedback, and if there's anything you would like me to do a tutorial on, feel free to drop me a line. Take care, bye.